welcome in to the Terp Talk Football Review, soon to be called the Lamont Jordan Show. This is Wayne Viner, and on the other side is Terp great Lamont Jordan. Lamont, we saw a game that started really poorly against Charlotte, and I'm sure you've been through something like that. What happens when a team actually has talent, but they come out flat like that? Um, I think a number of reasons, you know. Um, so many different things you can look at. You can look at possibly not taking your opponent. Um, I don't want to say not taking your opponent seriously, but, um, you know, maybe you're playing down to the to the name of the school, the the, the conference. Um, it could be just just not, you know, poor execution. Um, I think in, in the case of the Terps this weekend, I think it was just a lot of poor execution out there. Um, uh, Charlotte came out with an energy that we didn't match and we fell behind early and, and those things happen. But I think the most important thing is that we were able to get the win. Um, we had a chance to see the character of this team. And we also got a chance to see that, um, that for right now, our defense is really going to have to carry us until we can figure things out. Um, when it comes to protecting to on the offensive side of the ball. So the Terps do roar back. 38-20, and that last uh, six points for Charlotte was at the very end of the game when the third team was in. So really, Maryland got down 14 nothing, and then came out and, and blitzed them 38 to nothing for the majority of the game. So that was good. I think for me, the biggest turning point, hopefully we'll be able to look back at the moment that the team righted itself and say that was a pivotal moment in the season because this has happened before, this being that Maryland came out at night at home and it just didn't work. For whatever reason, Maryland did not look good. And the past few times that's happened, it snowballed into a disaster. This time, and Loxley gave the credit to the leadership like Ja'Shawn Jones, uh, who stood up and said, this is our team and we're going to turn that back around and we're going to win this one. Being on the field as you are, did you get a feeling that things changed on the Maryland bench once they got down 14 nothing? I feel like things changed at halftime, uh, especially going back and watching the film. Defense looked like they really picked it up. Um, looked like we brought a little more pressure in the second half. We played closer to the line of scrimmage. Um, I, I just feel like that if you look at the last two weeks, Coach Locks has gone in at halftime. And they've come out in the second half and just picked things up. Um, with that said, as we move into a tougher part of our schedule, the, you know, these guys have to go out there and play four quarters now. Uh, I know we're playing against University of Virginia this week, which is a big rivalry. Um, I've been excited about this game since I first saw it on the schedule. And I just watched a little bit of the Virginia um, James Madison game. And, you know, I, th this is not a game that we can come out and have a slow start in. Uh, you know, I think that you can rebound from a team that, let's just face it, I just think that we have more athletes. We have better athletes. Um, we're in the Big Ten. And although Virginia is 0-2 and, and you look at the fact that they lost to James Madison after watching this film, you know, this is a game that you, you better come out early. You can't wait and, and spot University of Virginia 14 points and think that 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 things are going to be as easy as they were. Yes, we gave up that touchdown at the end of the game. And yes, it was, you know, second, third unit. But at the end of the day, there were plays out there that needed to be made to keep those guys from getting in the end zone. And we just didn't make those and we just didn't make the play. And so, um, you know, this is a game that we have to come out. We have to start fast. The Terps have to start fast. Um, and, and that's really what it comes down to. Like this is, this is now you're, now you're getting into the uphill part of your schedule. Having slow starts, that's not going to cut it. And when you watched, when I watched University of Virginia's defense, if you're the defensive line, if you, first of all, if you're the University of Virginia, you're looking at this game as, Hey, we can go out here and win this game. If you watch what the Turks have done in the last two weeks, uh, especially from uh, the trenches. This game is going to be one and lost in the trenches. Yes, we have great wide receivers. Yes, we have dominant running backs. But at the end of the day, what happens in the trenches is really going to decide the outcome of this game. 
And if you're the University of Virginia's defensive line, you're licking your chops looking at the Maryland film. And, and I mean, Talia has been under pressure. We really haven't established our run game. And I'm hoping that these first two weeks from an offensive standpoint, I'm hoping that we were just vanilla on purpose. Uh, I also think that when you look at this last game, there were some plays out there to be made that we didn't make. You can't afford to have you can't continue to have drop passes week after week after week. That's just not going to fly and think that you're going to compete for the Big Ten championship. And so um, I, I, I think that we have our work cut out a little more for us this week than than I think is being led on. And I know that Coach Locks knows that. I know that although we got the win, that 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 he's not happy with the way that the team has played. We have to get off to fast starts. Under no circumstances can we afford to, to, to have a slow start Friday night. Well put. And the slow starts at night at home continue to be a problem. Maybe this week Maryland can get over that. Virginia went to Tennessee, called a neutral site game, but they played at the Tennessee Titans Stadium. And, yeah, it was sluggish at first, and then Tennessee just road graded them. They come home to play JMU. JMU comes into that game as a seven-point favorite. Virginia had it going on for a while, and then they had a rain delay and came out of that rain delay and gave up two touchdowns and lost at the end. So they probably, at the second game against Madison, lost a game that they think they should have won. So, yeah, they're 0-2, but I agree with you that they're probably coming in here looking at this saying, hey, we can compete with this, because James Madison is a near top 25 team, even though you think a little old James Madison. If they were a superpower in the division they were in before, they moved up to D1, and had they not been in the first year of D1 last year, JMU was bowl eligible. So it's hard to think of James Madison as being a football power, but I'm pretty sure they're going to end up going to a bowl game this year. So you could make the case that Virginia lost to two bowl teams, and now they come to College Park, and they need to win. They desperately need this win. Now, Maryland has won 10 straight games against non-conference opponents. You talked about this being a rivalry. So I'm going to start off. I mean, you played with this logo, with this helmet on. Mm -hmm. And you talked last week about playing Virginia four times. So for those who don't know, the younger crowd, why is Virginia a rival to you? Uh, I mean, first of all, I mean, we're, we're neighbors. I mean, you're talking about Maryland and Virginia, you know, we're, we're neighbors. And when you think about the ACC, um, just, just for me being able, anytime we play against an ACC opponent, it to me is going to be a big deal because, I mean, we were one of the original ACC schools. And I'm hoping that that this isn't a situation, not, to, not this game, but just to move to the Big Ten that we're trying to elim eliminate the pass and, and just focus purely on the Big Ten. University of Virginia, if there's one thing that I remember is a number of things I remember playing against them. But the thing that I remember being told as a freshman and experiencing this for four years is it doesn't matter what the score is. It doesn't matter what the time of the season is. It doesn't matter the win loss record. Those games are always bloodbaths. Those games are physical. There are loud hits out there. And, and these are this is a game that you want to win. I mean, I still have that sick feeling in my stomach thinking about thinking back to my junior year where, you know, if we win the game, we go to a bowl in Hawaii. We're winning the game. And then on the last drive on University of Virginia's last drive, um, you know, we lose the game. They throw a bomb, complete a touchdown and, and, and we lose. You want to go out there and get this win, not just for the rivalry, but to continue on with what you're trying to accomplish this year. And so I hope that those players understand that this isn't just just this just a, this isn't just a regular game here. Like this game matters. This game matters to our Terps fan base, especially those who have been loyal supporters of the Terps. I think about Mr. Gossett. I think about just the, the, the number of families, the number of of people who have just, I mean, you know, even yourself who oh, have absolutely have been, you know, Maryland alumni who remember the ACC days. This game matters. All right. We'll talk more about that after this break. Uh, we want to thank Rick Jacklich. He's one of those guys that you talk about that just, he doesn't like Virginia. He was here for the whole rivalry. 
Jack Litch Law Group, you know, they sponsor everything Maryland. You can get the big dog himself to be on your team. If you need a lawyer, Rick Jacklich should be at the top of your list. You can reach the Jacklich Law Group at 301-781-7600. Call the big dog at 301-781-7600. And of course, Terp Talk has always been sponsored by Viner Forgates. If you have IT problems, call Viner Forgates, your hometown Terrapin IT consulting firm. The help desk there fixes issues fast. Our goal is to make your company work. For your cybersecurity, network, and PC issues, call Viner Forgates at 877-797-8776. All right, we're back with Lamont Jordan. When you said you know, it's an ACC thing. Here's a helmet from that era. And right on there is why it's a rival. It's been one of the more important games. If you look back over a few years, and I'll even go back to 19, I think it was 82. Maryland had to go to Virginia and win to get that ACC championship. They had beat Clemson at Memorial Stadium and they had to go to Virginia and win. And they got that done. There was a 1990, 91 year where Maryland goes to the bowl down in Louisiana, they had to go to Virginia as a heavy underdog. Mark Mason had a game for the ages for your Maryland Terrapins, and Maryland goes and wins at Virginia and becomes bowl eligible and goes and plays Louisiana Tech and in a 34-all tie. You brought up the game that, as I said on the last show, it's one of the best games I've ever seen, which I think you just alluded to, ended up being 35-34 for the other team. And you were spectacular in that game. If you can go back, I said we'd do this later, so today is later. Talk about what it's like to get 306 yards against a team like Virginia that that is clearly an all-time Maryland rival. I mean, just from a personal standpoint, um, you know, I just remember that game. It was myself and uh, Thomas Jones, who was, I think he was drafted eighth overall the following year to the Cardinals. Um, you talk about both teams are fighting for a bowl game um, <clears throat> to rush for 300 yards and, and, you know, to rush. It, it's easy to rush for yards when you're playing against teams that don't belong on the field with you, where your team is stacked. That's one thing. But when you're when, when you're playing against a team like University of Virginia in a rivalry game for me to go out and, and have the game that I had, <clears throat> I take my hat off to my offensive lineman. Um, my wide receivers who who just do a great job of blocking down the field. Um, it was exhausting. I will definitely tell you that. It, it probably took me a week to recover from that game. Thank goodness it was the last game of the season. Um, but from a personal standpoint, it, it feels good when you when you just go out there and you just you just empty yourself. You give yourself you just give everything that you have for your team to get a victory. And that's what I'm hoping that these guys are going to go out here and do this weekend. Is just go out there and do your job. Realize that 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 regardless of what the score is, no matter how much time is on the clock, let the fans celebrate. Let the fans cheer. My focus was just going out there every play, doing the best that I could, getting the yards that I can get and just hope that at the end of the game that we win the game. Unfortunately, we didn't get the win. But to go out there, have 300 yards, three touchdowns to still have. I believe I still have the single game um, rushing record. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a good feeling, you know, it's a great feeling actually. I think you do still have that. And you've got to throw in there that 97 yard run. I believe it was 97. You were backed up against your own goal line and you took off. And uh, once again, in, in my memory, that's one of the greatest Maryland football plays of all time. How do you get, or do you think you can get the young people who play in this game that haven't played Virginia since 2013. Maryland hasn't played since 2013. Maryland won 27-26. Caleb Rowe had a good game that week. How do you get it across? You've coached. You got 17, 18, 20-year-olds that have only seen Maryland in the Big Ten. How do you get this across to them so it means even close to what it means to you? Um, I think it's important that you have guys who have participated in that era. And, you know, you have two guys, you have two coaches, the head coach, Mike Loxley. You also have the defensive backs coach, Henry Baker. Um, Bake was a, a former teammate of mine, so he understands the rivalry. And so it's, it's really up to the people who have participated in the rivalry 
to have an energy within themselves that that everybody around them can feel like you have like you, you those are going to be the guys who's going to get these players to realize that listen this is a big deal this is a huge deal yes it's no you know no it's not ohio state no it's not michigan no it's not a big game but when you talk about the state of maryland going up against virginia like this is a big deal and and we're going to see early on which coaching staff i believe which coaching staff is able to get their players to see how significant this game is. Um, I think it's significant for recruiting. When I watch some of the film from for University of Virginia, there are guys down there that are good players. And I, hey, I'm sure Coach Loxley would love to have some of those players on this team. Not to not to discredit the players that we have on this team, but at the end of the day, when you look at the portal, when you look at the fact that that you have to recruit, that you're building a program, you're still competing with the University of Virginia. Um, so I, I really think that it's on the guys who have participated in this rivalry um, to have an energy this week that sets the tone for the remainder of the season. And I said this, I believe I went on a show with Doc, that when we played University of Virginia, that's the game that I'm looking forward to because that's the game that's going to set the stage for the remainder of our season. When you look at University of Virginia this year, they've played against Tennessee and they've played against James Madison. They have played against better competition than what the Terps have played against. And so if the Terps think that they're going to look at Virginia's record, look at the fact that they lost to a James Madison team that doesn't necessarily have the big name, but but they moved up to Division One, And at the end of the day, they went to the University of Virginia on the road to get a win. These players have to make sure that they're locked in. I, I, I know I've said it a few times on this show, and I'm going to continue to say it again. You cannot get off to a slow start this this game. Virginia has uh, Jones and Hollis, I believe, are their running backs. Those guys are explosive. They're downhill. After watching our film, our linebackers are definitely going to have to fill these holes. This is not a game that defensively that, that you can come out. This is not a game for the faint hearted. It's just that simple. This is one of those games that this game has to be nasty. The University of Virginia is coming in here and they're coming in here to try to whip us. The stadium is nice. We have a great atmosphere. I cannot wait until the fourth quarter starts where we turn out the lights and everybody brings out their cell phones and 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 and, and, and just to be able to go through that experience. But I want to go through that experience while we have a lead. And, and, and if these guys can get off to a fast start, our offensive line has to hold up. That Virginia defensive front, they're coming. They have some defensive ends that are going to give our tackles some issues. I mean, that can give our tackles some issues, especially at our right tackle spot. And I, I, I can't wait to see what the game plan is going to be from an offensive standpoint to get this offense rolling. Because we have some explosive players on the offensive side of the ball. And I know this as being an offensive coach, being a, being a head coach, being an offensive coordinator myself who has – coach some teams that we, we, you know, we had some issues on the offensive line. This is where the challenge is for you as an offensive coordinator to be able to come up with a game plan that, that makes up for what you, for, for, for where you lack on the offensive side of the ball. But this is also a game where as a running back, as a running back, this is where you bite down on your mouthpiece and then pass protection. Every time you get a chance to take a shot on one of these defensive linemen, you got to make them feel you. You don't have time to sit and wait for the hole to open up. This is one of those games that you bite down on your mouthpiece. You see the hole, you hit the hole, and you pick up as many yards as you can to keep those chains moving because that's what's going to, in my opinion, that's what's going to open things up for 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 our for our dynamic wide receivers that we have. Talia is just going to have to deliver the ball, not stare down a receiver. And and when I think about the first play of the game. Um, the first play of our offense where Talia threw the interception. When you're a quarterback and you come into a game and you're and you're getting hit, you're under siege, you're always under pressure. Sometimes you have a tendency to get locked in on your first read and you don't feel confident enough to get off your first read and get back to your second and third read. Hold on a second there. You're saying that because he was getting hit in the game before, that he already had that in his head when he got on the field against Charlotte. It's natural as a player, as a person who who played the position. Like you, if you're a quarterback, and I've seen this, I've seen this on every level. It doesn't matter if it's Tom Brady. It doesn't matter if you, it doesn't matter who it is. 
if you're used to being under siege, there is this there is a clock where maybe you feel like you have to speed up. Now, I'm not saying that that's the reason that he threw it. I think that it was a great disguise by I think it was disguised wonderfully by by Charlotte. I mean, that they were in a cover three where where in a cover three, your cornerbacks are responsible for the deep third and that outside linebacker is responsible for the flats. Well, if you look at the play, that outside linebacker lined up inside of our wide receiver, inside of that slot wide receiver. So from a quarterback's perspective, yes, I'm going to throw the hitch. You get a cover three, you have a hitch. That hitch is a give me. I think they did a great job of getting out there to the to the flats. Now, it was a hitch route thrown to the short side of the field. And so those are things, you know, that there are certain things that you have to be able to, to, to pay attention to. But if you are a quarterback and you're used to getting hit, if you don't have the confidence in your offensive line, sometimes you will have a tendency to to stick with your first read, not have the confidence to get back to your second read. I really think that it was a first play. Let's go out here and get a quick pitch and catch, pick up a first down, get to Leah grooving and going. I'm sure that he's seen that. I know that the offensive staff have seen that, and I know that they're going to get those things corrected. The question is, is are these guys on the offensive line going to give, uh, if they give to the time to throw the ball, I, I think that we'll shred this Virginia's defense. I don't think right. handle, they, I don't think that they can handle our, our wide receiver core. And that's why I say this thing comes down to the trenches. If we cannot hold up, if we can't handle pressure on the offensive side of the ball, this is going to be a long day offensively. Defensively, if our linebackers do not fill these gaps, this is the best two running backs that they have seen all season long. And if these guys don't strap up their mouthpieces and if we don't handle things on the offensive and defensive line and our linebackers, this could be a very interesting game, and I can't wait to go out there and see. But I fully expect that Coach Locks is going to have this team ready to play. I think that these guys are going to play up to 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 University of Virginia. I truly believe that they're going to understand that this is a game of great significance, and, and I just can't wait to get out here Friday night, call this game, and just just be a part of the atmosphere. And I really hope that the fans get there early, or screaming and yelling before the game to really show these players how big of a game this is and with that we're going to wrap up this edition of the turp talk football show starring lamont jordan and we will see you early in the week next week to talk about the virginia game but unfortunately we're up against the clock and we have to stop here lamont as always that that was great and i want to thank everybody who's stuck with us for for this show thank you so much for listening and we appreciate all of the, the positive words about this show that we got in person and on the phone last week. And I think it's been a, a pleasure doing this. We look forward to sticking with this throughout the Maryland football season. For Lamont Jordan, this is Wayne Viner. We will see you early next week to talk about the Maryland-Virginia outcome. <laughs>